Welcome to Busy Bee Living. Today we're gonna design a little display case, but it's gonna hold some different items that I've never had to mount before in the past, specifically some badges, a torpedo fin, and some coffee mugs. So we're gonna have to work around that. But first thing we need to do is rip down the frame and then miter the edges so we get a good structure to start with. Now when it comes to making this frame, we're going to use a stop lock technique as you can see here. And what that ensures is that all four of our pieces, the two long ones and the two short ones, are going to match perfectly. So we're going to have a nice square frame. And as you can see from here, we're just going to quickly check to make sure everything's coming together right for us. And now we come back and we're going to have to make a rabbit. Now instead of switching out the blade to a dado blade, we are going to go ahead and just use our existing blade in the table saw. We're going to attach a sacrificial fence to our fence because we don't want our blade to ruin our nice fence there. And then we'll just take a piece of scrap wood, make sure that our depth is set properly, and now we can go ahead and we can start putting those grooves into our frame. Now we want to make sure that we pick the perfect sides for the up and then put the bottom base up against that fence. And we're just going to keep passing through, moving the fence slowly back and forth just to make sure that we don't overcut and make a groove too big for ourselves here because we want that half inch piece of ply to fit in there just flush with the back. Now that we've finally completed that process, we just need to come back and clean up that rabbit. So we're gonna go ahead and just take a chisel and clean up any of the edges that might be grooved into there from the table saw blade. Because remember, we didn't use a dado blade, we used our regular one. So you will have a little bit of a wave to it, but a nice sharp chisel will clean that up and smooth it right out for you. Now before assembling the frame together, we're going to go want to go ahead and we're going to want to sand it before we glue it together so the insides get sanded nicely. But like every project, there's always a hiccup. And as you can see here, my Bosch sander finally gave it quits. So after a quick run to the home store, well, we're going to get ourselves a nice brand new DeWalt orbital sander. It wasn't the one I was looking for as they were out of stock, but I will tell you this one actually performed quite well and I'm happy with it so it's a nice uh, little pickup to the uh, tool line. I haven't thrown out that other sander, I'm convinced one day I'll fix it but until then this will hold up quite well and do the job that I need to do. So on to sanding. Does anyone actually enjoy this process? Now we're done with that joyful process of sanding, we can come back and actually assemble the frame. Now I use these little right angle clamps that I picked up from Rockler and they come in handy when you're trying to put a piece together and it will hold the pieces on a perfect 90 degree. You just need to make sure you line up the edges and then you can tack them into place with the pin nailer. The pin nailer will actually hide those nails quite a bit more than say your brad nailer were, would. So you don't have to worry about those showing as much. 
I also still use a square piece inside there just to make sure that everything's coming together. But as you can see, as I put the final piece in here, we have a nice square frame. Once the glue has had time to dry, we can remove those clamps and we will quickly make sure that we didn't knock anything out of square, which we're all good. And then we can measure for that inner panel that we're going to attach to the back of the frame. We are going to use a piece of half inch material plywood as we're going to have to put some screws into it to hold the mugs into place. So we have a fresh new sheet here. Then we're going to bust out the old wen track saw and bust down into pieces. Now you can make these cuts on a table saw, but a full sheet like this can be tough to kind of manhandle. And even in the shop here, you can see I'm trying to figure out the best way to put it. So after much configuration, I finally figured I might actually have to move the tables around. But this works out quite well, just leaving a gap in between two tables. The material is supported on both sides and then that way you don't have to worry about sheets or anything falling down and causing a big blowout in the plywood and we will get a nice clean cut with just one pass. Now when it comes to dry fitting, we cut the material just slightly too big. So we had to come back here, just trim off just a pretty much a blade's width coming off of this. And the track saw handles that even with just one quick pass. Still got a nice clean out and now you can see we got a perfect fit in there. So we can come back, add some glue in the edges, bring that pin nailer back over, drop the panel in there and we can tack it into place and wait for the glue to dry. And like any project, back to sanding. Just to clean up those front edges that we weren't really able to address until we had it all glued up and now we can clean up any glue squeeze out that might have occurred. And nice thing here is when we're sanding, we've only used this on this project here. So all this is cherry dust from the sawdust. So we can add some glue and now we can come back to those pin nail holes. Just add some of that into it and then we can go ahead and sand. And we do that because if you can see what you purchase from the store for cherry, is way way too red where the sawdust is going to match the material perfectly so once you add that in there let it dry for a little bit and come back with your sander clean it all up and it'll hide the pin nailers but more importantly when you go to finish it you're not going to end up with these loud you know over red portions where you just filled in so it, it's a nice way to hide those and actually match the actual material. Then we're going to go ahead and come in and clean up the miters from any glue squeeze out again. And we can come back with our lacquer finally and go ahead and finish just the sides. We don't need to put this on the interior panel, just the interior sides. Because we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop a foam board and some felt over top of that but we will need to finish the back side of this as well. And the great thing about lacquer is it dries pretty quickly. So now we're ready to cut our foam board down to size to put into the interior of the frame. And just measure out some dimensions 
and then we can go ahead and we can take our straight edge with our nice little roller razor and we can cut a nice clean edge to drop into this frame. And as you can see, we actually cut it right. So now we can come back with the pieces that we're going to feature in the frame. Now we're gonna start laying them out and seeing exactly where they wanna go. Now, this project was a lot smaller when we started, but as my dad slowly cleaned out his desk, more mugs, badges, and pins were found. So it slowly grew. But now that we oversized it a little bit, just to give us some wiggle room in case he found anything else, we can lay those pieces down and then find the center point because we want to make sure that things are balanced. You don't want it off put because it'll look weird to the eye. But once you have the mugs in place, we're just gonna put a little quick indication mark with a pencil where the handles are. And then this is where we're gonna apply the hooks. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna punch holes into the foam board where we're gonna drill through. Now we're gonna drill all the way through the foam board and through the back half inch piece of ply. But you don't want blowout. So you wanna put a sacrificial piece of wood behind it. Or if you're like me and you have a cheap bench on the side, just drill straight into it. And now we have those marks ready to go to accept the hooks for the coffee mugs. But before we do that, we have to add the felt to the foam board now. So we're just gonna lay it out, roughly cut the felt down to size, and now we're gonna have to come back with some two-sided fabric tape to attach this felt to the foam board. Now, when we do this, if you can see, we're gonna start with a cross pattern. We're gonna go diagonal in one direction and then go ahead and remove those extra pieces over top so it exposes the double side. And once we do that, we're gonna come back and at, come across in the other direction and repeat the process of removing the tape. With that complete, we're ready to attach the felt. Now you can see you can actually pick it up and move it around if you need to, but really make sure you smooth it out. You don't want any wrinkles or anything like that showing on that front side. Once you do that, you can cut the felt down a little bit, but we're going to fold it over top of the back side of the foam board. And when we do this, we're just going to go ahead and add that double-sided fabric tape again to secure that to the back. And then when you go ahead and you fold over, you'll just want to go ahead and trim the felt just so it's not super thick because you want it to fit into the frame. It will be a little bit tight as we cut this frame to fit into, or that we cut the back foam to fit into the frame without this felt. Now, it doesn't add that much more thickness. So you're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna slowly work it back into its place and get a nice, nice tight fit into there. Now, this won't have to worry about getting attached to that back half inch piece of ply because the hooks that we used to mount the mugs will go all the way through that foam board and you can see it goes into the half inch piece of ply and that's gonna hold that piece into its place. Now to do this, all I did was I took a little sharp punch, came through the back side. This is why we drilled all the way through. So we could punch through the felt, 
once we see that where the tip comes through we know exactly where to start screwing in these little clips and it worked out amazing it didn't mess the felt up at all damage it or anything like that and we got the hooks exactly where we wanted them so now we just go ahead and test fit just to make sure the mugs will work in its place and as you can see it came out quite nice so now we got to come back lay the piece down because now is the time that we're going to pin the badges into their place Now when you're mounting the badges, it can be a little bit tricky because you don't want to go straight down into it or the pin is going to bend once it hits that half inch piece of ply. So go in an angle and just catch that back foam board and then you can drive the pin all the way through so it's pretty much buried and concealed within the badge design. You'll get a nice clean look here and people won't even be able to notice the pins in its place. Well, that's a wrap on the display case for my dad's retirement gift. I'm really excited to give this to him. I can't wait till he sees it and kind of gets to see all his work laid out and visually out there so he can kind of reminisce on some of the good, uh, good times he had throughout his projects, either with the Navy or with NASA. There was a little bit of design changes, and by a little bit, I mean a lot, as my dad retired, so he was slowly cleaning his desk out. So we just kept growing and growing and growing. So I decided to make it slightly oversized because I'm, I have a feeling we're missing the Mark 50 torpedo uh, mug um, as well as some mission badges. But definitely um, these pins all of a sudden came out of nowhere. We were not prepared for those. And my dad started bringing those home so he can put those and add them being just that foam board. He can easily tack those as well as I got some extra hooks in case we need to add those as well, we'll make it happen. So it's really kind of cool. It's actually an interactive piece, which is done on purpose because of, you know, my kids and my nieces, my dad, you know, always tells stories to them about different things he worked on and everything like that. So they can visually, you know, come in here. And if my dad's talking about the Mark 48, he can take this and hand it to the kids and they can check out exactly a little piece of what he was working on as well as you know checking out the mugs if you ever wanted to use them for a cup of coffee i think the mark 48 one might be officially retired after those chips but the other ones especially his spat his self-propelled acoustic target uh project that was like his main go-to mug as you can see it's been faded over the years so he can still access it if he really wants to have a cup of coffee with it but Something though, it's really cool that he can hang up in his office and kind of reminisce over those good times. So if you have any questions on the actual project though that we might not have covered in the video, go ahead and leave a comment below and we'll get to those as soon as we can. We try to answer as many as we, we can and in a timely manner. It can be difficult as the channel's growing and it's a good problem to have. So. Uh, thank you for doing that and thank you for your patience if it takes us a little while to get to those and if it's your first time here we'd love to earn your subscription the channel has been growing rapidly and we really really appreciate it especially if you're a returning viewer thank you so much for your support it's it's amazing so we really do appreciate it and thank you so much for that that being said we're gonna wrap this up so thanks for buzzing by you go make some dust